It's interesting. In that Bhagavad Marichimala, after he gives the first three slokas, the Sambandha Abhideya Slok, uh, Prayojan Tattva, Bhagavatam, what, what will I want to like? What's the first verse going to be right, that he puts there? And what is it? Kalena Nashta Pralaye. That in the course of time, this is lost. Fourth chapter of the Gita, Evam Parampara Praptam Imam Rajarshya Vidiv Salkalaneha Mahata Yogo Nashta Paranda. The link is broken. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the Bhagavad speech, the truth is invariably, inevitably converted into error. So this is being dealt with right away, not hidden or official, the official story comes out or any such. They're acknowledging in, the, in these three places that uh, it will be broken. And what's the next verse? What Guru Maharaj always quoted? Uh, Parampar Jena Prakriti by Chitrad. That uh, the, guru, the truth is disseminated by the Guru. It's heard by a plurality of receivers, disciples. And then what happens? It's modified according to the temperament of the receiver. And then they pass that on and on and on and, and Guru Maharaj says, and what do we find today? A religious jungle. That's how he referred to it. So, um, that, that, and Maharaj, I will want you to speak in a moment to give an introduction actually. This is the pre-introduction introduction. <laughs> so that, that line of descent, goes about. is it that spiritual substance and who has the capacity to properly represent that? That's what I wanted to say about that. And today mm -hmm. is the Sri Vyasa Puja of Om Vishnu Parachi Labhakti Rokko Kridha Dev Goswami Maharaj. And it's that grand personality who has come and in this very age where for the first time around the world Mahaprabhu's wave of Krishna consciousness has come it's Srila Guru Maharaj who's in English language kept everything completely substantial as it is done the, the course correction for anything which may be going off in the meantime as Krishna consciousness is introduced into the world On that note, and Srila Gurudev said mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Guru Maharaj said, I was meant to preach in the English language. He said that himself. Gurudev. No, Srila Guru Maharaj said, Guru I was meant Men. to preach in the English language. Ah. But what Gurudev said was, Guru Maharaj had this book, it's like Sanskrit, Bengali, English, that's his dictionary. So all the words that he's using, it, it has the Sanskrit basis, the Bengali, and speaking of Bengali, Bangla, Hare Krishna, come on up, Joe. Vijay Krishna, please. Come. You're doing something? Oh, okay. Then we don't want to interrupt that. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to reiterate what you're saying, it's not uh, something on the side. Guru Maharaj, in essence, was born to preach Krishna consciousness in the English language. I'll give you one example. Like, and he's modified the English language. He's introduced new concepts into the English language. So when it came to the subjective evolution of consciousness, subjective evolution, there is no Sanskrit equivalent. There is no Bengali equivalent. Someone who was, wanted to translate this into German showed me like that. <laughs> I said, no. I said, what you will do is you will introduce this expression into the German language, subjective evolution. Don't try and translate it in some other way. If you hear a lecture of Srila Guru Maharaj at Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, uh, and, and it's all in Bengali, but when this part comes, he'll go, subjective evolution, and then he'll, subjective evolution, that's the word. So that's his original concept. It's not represented anywhere else. There's no Sanskrit or Bengali equivalent, thus proving he was meant to do this. And it is that Srila Guru Maharaj, who Srila Sarasati Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, his Guru Maharaj wanted to come to the West. 
and to bring Krishna consciousness to the West. And Guru Maharaj, for his particular and very sound reasoning, explained to Srila Sarasachi Thakur, I don't think I am the fittest man because I can't understand that intonation <laughs> so easily. Plus, and it is very difficult for me <laughs> to mix with <laughs> the kind of people we are <laughs> without all the, you know, the proper habits which Not are... Not so Srila Gurudev. But that's another story. That's another, that's an <laughs> extension of the story, or yes, the, how the, the picture gets bigger and bigger. Yes. So anyhow, it was, it was the intention of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur that that grand substantial, substantial line-like preaching that he was doing in India and extended India, and means what the East Bengal, now Pakistan, and the, you can say the Indian subcontinent, that what, he, that what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur was doing there. He wanted this to come to all over the world, as did Srila Bhakti Vino Thakur, who Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur is presenting, he's presenting Srila Bhakti Vino Thakur. And so mm. this way, that line of the intention that Guru Maharaj will head up the Western preaching, very firmly established. And Srila Prabhupada, who came, as everybody knows, to introduce, distribute broadly Krishna consciousness in the Western world, his foundation, his understanding, his, the development of his conception of what is Krishna consciousness, Mahaprabhu, what is the message of Srila Sarasati Thakur, largely came from Srila, from Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Sridha mm. Maharaj. In that famous picture that you uh, captioned Holy Trinity yes, right. with Srila Swami Maharaj Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj on the Vyasasana, Guru Deva their side. Many things are said there. One of the things, that, when he says, what Govinda Maharaj has said is true, I accept his Guru Maharaj as my Shiksha Guru and him as my affectionate son. Mm -hmm. But he says these words, he says, um, uh, Prabhupada, meaning Saraswati Thakur, he said, Prabhupada and Krishna liked him to prepare me. He's saying, what Maharaj is saying, Prabhupada himself is saying, Prabhupada, Saraswati Thakur and Krishna liked him to prepare me for this campaign. <clears throat> and Srila Prabhupada's preaching came all over the world and who is it that Srila Prabhupada is reporting to in India, back in base if you will, it is to Srila Sridhar Maharaj, to Srila Guru Maharaj. And in due course of time, it's Srila Guru Maharaj who gave that description of Srila Prabhupada, described Srila Prabhupada by seeing the result of his activities, that he must be empowered to do what he did and in such an incredibly short time. And therefore, we must say that he is Shaktya Vesh, he is empowered to do this preaching. And then one devotee, asked to Guru Maharaj, had the foresight to ask to Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, empowered by, by who? Who empowered him? Like, we, we would be happy enough to hear, oh, he's an empowered incarnation. Yeah. And then Guru Maharaj replied, Nityananda Prabhupada. Dai Nithai. Dai Nithai. <laughs> and that Srila Prabhupada, then it was his wish <coughs> that Guru Maharaj, Srila Sri Maharaj, will be the, presi the president <coughs> of that mission that Srila Prabhupada was developing very quickly around the world. Known as the Is International ah. Society for Krishna Consciousness. Indeed. ISKCON. ISKCON, the Hare Krishna movement. Srila Prabhupada wanted Guru Maharaj to be the president. And he, in, he prayed to Guru Maharaj, he, he requested Guru Maharaj. And I will build, I will make a room for you, next to my room, right there in Mayapur. And he explained how the construction was going on lift. and that it would be upstairs yeah. and Guru Maharaj said, oh, but you have, you're saying your room is upstairs, I cannot, cannot go upstairs. Don't worry, we'll put elevator, <laughs> lift, depending on which country you're from. we put an elevator or a lift in there so that you won't have to go up and down stairs. But Guru Maharaj, and he also explained to us, he explained that uh, he's the feeling that, first of all, that he won't live very long, that Guru Maharaj is thinking he won't outlive Srila Prabhupada, one thing. And the other thing, that Srila Guru Maharaj, he'd 
kind of made a positive step to withdraw. And he said, they can come to see me, but I am here. I've established this Chaitanya Sarasat Mat as a little bit of a refuge from the missionary things which become involved. But Srila Prabhupada wanted Guru Maharaj to be the president and wanted that the Western devotees, especially the leaders, will come to Guru Maharaj for their training and so they can hear from him. And, and he said in that regard, one mm -hmm. thing to add is, and the secretary would be Prabhupada. So Guru Maharaj would be the president and, and he would be the secretary. secretary. That sounds like a pretty extraordinary mission. <laughs> and, and when he brought yes. the disciples, his exact words, he said, I have brought rough things to you. You must refine, like you bring a, a diamond in the rough, the, you know, the cliche, a diamond in the rough, and then you polish that to brilliance. So it was not only saying these things, but Srila Prabhupada himself came with his, some senior devotees, those leaders that he hoped would become leaders in the future and who would bring the message to the West to show what is a standard program in a temple, <coughs> what prayers do we sing, what are the tunes, the tunes that we're singing today. Then he brought his senior persons to Guru Maharaj and they stayed in what is still known as the Blue, the blue house, house, even though it is the now white, in case you're looking for it. Eye. Let's hear it for the Blue House. Yeah, let's hear it for the Blue House. <laughs> and uh, one thing to, yeah. to, again, support Hare Krishna, what Maharaj is saying. So, there is a, uh, one period where Prabhupada's now, the movement's thriving all over the world, and he's coming to report to Guru Maharaj and get his association because he can, takes what Guru Maharaj says is, he said, I, I take it that Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur you know, is speaking through you, what you say I take on my head as an order. So we're told at the Navadip train station that they're met by two groups of devotees, the devotees from Chaitanya Saraswati Mat and another Mat, and they're the welcoming party for uh, um, Srila Prabhupada and his senior devotees. So they have a big kirtan and they first dhanavat, stop at the, the other mat, which is a little bit down the uh, road. Uh, and, and we're told there that like, everyone has matching saffron, the brahmacharis and sannyasis, all their clothes perfectly match. They dance in unison and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, sight to behold and participate in. And then, so that, but he's staying at Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, so they respectfully move on from there to Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, because we know Gurudev's famous saying about the difference between us and Eskon and Sri Dasramas Prabhu, he's saying like primary education, secondary, ed he's getting into, and Gurudev, no, he goes, Prabhu. They dress better. <laughs> and when he was telling this once in Russia, our beloved, let's say Chidananda Prabhu walked into the temple, like right on cue. You know? <laughs> so to re to prove what Gurudev was saying. But anyway, at that time, one of Prabhupada's leading disciples, that's when he saw Prabhupada and Gurmas talking together and knowing that Prabhupada's taking instruction from Srila Guru Maharaj. He's in the position of um, shiksha, right? giving shiksha. That's, and so this devotee said to him, what were you talking about? And, and that's when Prabhupada said, he, uh, he said, um, if I told you, you would faint. He has very high realizations of Krishna, but he's keeping then. And that's where he said, I offered him the president of our Imagine that. He said, I offered him. It's, it's not um, half-hearted or just a polite thing to say. He's offering him the president. He goes, yeah, he declined. He's saying he's more, uh, you know, uh, engaged in internal culture. And then that devotee innocently says to Prabhupada, what's the difference between these two mats? And Prabhupada says, in the first mat, their emphasis is on quantity. He said, at this month, the emphasis is on quality. And he said, I want our society to have quality and, you know, and quantity. And it is that, Srila Bhakti Rokok, Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, whose appearance is today. 
and we'll hear some of his glories and we'll hear from Srila Bhakti Sri Goswami Maharaj who actually has introduced, been largely responsible for the whole of the Western world coming to know of the presence of Srila Prabhupada and of then Srila the sub... Srila Guru oh, Maharaj. Yes, correct. Thank you. I'm not going to take the... <laughs> the presence of Srila Sridham or Srila Guru Maharaj. Yeah, and please well, do... But once Prabhupada was arriving at the New York airport and... and uh, so, and there's like 500 devotees there in Kirtan, like Sri Lanka Didi might have been there, Nasi Maharaj. But anyway, so we're waiting, and we know he's going to come. We're talking about Krishna coming through the door, door and door, you know, this is so embarrassing. But so we know he's going to come out of this one particular elevator. So, but it's not happening yet. So the leader there says to me, Go see when Prabhupada's coming, you know. So I get on, you know, go up, and then they find, oh, he can't, it's going to be a little while. And then I get on the elevator to go back down, and I go, oh, no. And I hear, the kirtan, it's, it's, it's like, and their devotees are going, and they see, and, I'm, <laughs> and it's an empty, I'm the only person on it. You know? <laughs> and then, like, I don't know, ah. and then the door is open, and you hear, and you're like, oh. <laughs> Like when a record, like you pull the plate and it goes, <laughs> and yeah. Oh, so dear. there's that side also. <laughs> <laughs> so it is this Srila Sridhar Maharaj, Srila Guru Maharaj, that Goswami Maharaj very instrumental for making the world aware of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, who he is in that relationship and continuing until today to make but the world like aware that of Srila That Devashish Prabhu speak next. Yes, okay, much. And you can introduce him. Remember, I, Srila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj, he is the secretary, uh, Gurudev is the secretary of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, under Guru Maharaj's chargership, and Guru Maharaj personally selected him to be Gurudev's secretary. And happily, and it would, would only be him. Gurudev, I was just reading yesterday where Gurudev, he's telling Srila Madhusudan Maharaj how things are going to be in the future and everything, and about the, the different personalities and everything. But when he turns to him, he says, who was Mahananda, Prabhu at the time, he said, but you, I have full faith in you, Prabhu. And then you'll help I arrange all these things. But I, everyone else, you know, I'm trying, I, but I have full faith in you. So that is why Srila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj is the secretary in my, of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat in the line of Srila Gurudev. The, but the servant of the Vaishnava. The servant. It's, it's a servant role. That's why Gurudev yes. did not want to be the Acharya. He, as people crave the master position or the Srila Gurudev told Guru Maharaj to make you know, Hari Charan or Krishna, uh, some other disciple, the Acharya, and I'll continue to be the secretary and serve them. He had no designs on the Acharya ship. He's trying to escape that. The genuine Vaishnavas, they're trying to escape Pratishta. Because they know it destroys devotion and what you have may be withdrawn. They're running away from that. As Madhavendra Puri did, and that is the line. So repeatedly he's telling Guru Maharaj, make one of them and I'll, as I do for you, I will do for them. But for Guru Maharaj, it could only be Srila Gurudev. Only Srila Gurudev can continue his mat, his line to his standard. That's a fact. And it's still a fact, right? So, but in that time, like we hear the, you know, the story when Gurudev, about, about Mahaprabhu here, and uh, Gurudev says to Guru, you know, Goswami Maharaj gave you three deities, search for Sri Krishna, Sri Guru and His Grace, and Golden Volcano at the time. You know, you give him one. And it was this Mahaprabhu who was meant for his birthplace. So how perfect is this today? That Mahaprabhu was, um, appeared from the heart of Srila Gurudev as an offering to Srila Guru Maharaj in his birthplace, where his appearance would be celebrated. So is that then another time, he knows Guru Maharaj will never give the name Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. There's only the Mat in Navadvipa, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. So in Calcutta, 
in Calcutta, under Gurudev, still, what was the name? You know, Sri Chaitanya Saraswata Krishnanu Shilana Sangha. Anyway, he will not sanction Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat in any other place. It's just the Mat in Navadip, that's the Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. But in consideration of London and uh, the Mat growing there and, and the devotees and publishing so many things, uh, Gurudev was asking Srila Guru Maharaj uh, to, it would give some special inspiration to the devotees there if he would allow Chaitanya Saraswati, to, that to be Sri Chaitanya Saraswati. And Guru Maharaj, as you, he's um, reluctant and uh, avoiding, and, and then Gurudev turns on his sweetness. That, what he, was, he told me once, like, when devotees were disturbing Guru Maharaj, he said, he was saying, from now on, they have to go through you or me. If we're not here, can't be, they can't approach him directly. He said, before I approach Guru Maharaj and tell him something, he said, I see first what is his mood. And if he's in a certain mood, I may not say certain things. And his magic mantra was Tunga Mani Mandire, this song from his childhood about the heart of Srimati Radharani being like a lighthouse of Krishna pr Prem. That, if he would sing that, it would put Guru Maharaj in a good mood. But so he sang about that. So he knew how to, we can say, you know, sweet talk Guru Maharaj, as only he can, to get him to acquiesce or comply with something. So then, but also, not just on the basis of sentiment, but substance. So his strategy, he said, as Maharaj alluded to before, Srila Saraswati Thakur wanted Srila Guru Maharaj to preach in the West actually. Because when we all came, Guru Maharaj, and you've heard him say this too, because then suddenly the whole Western world is on his doorstep. He said, Muhammad could not go to the mountain, but the mountain has come to Muhammad. <laughs> you know, and he said also, the Western world is on my doorstep. What should I do? Shudder the mat and not allow them in? Because he's saying, I'm, I'm a man sitting alone on the rooftop and I don't, I'm not going hither and thither disturbing anyone and now the Western world, but the grace of Srila Swami Maharaj has come to me as he wanted to refine them, so I'm doing that. And so because Saraswati Thakur had sent uh, his, what do you say, emissary, remember the famous envoy talk, uh, and he, and Sri Krishna Chaitanya, that book, that was the book to, for the Western preaching commissioned by Professor Sanyal. So when they have that book, he will go with that book to England and begin the, the Western uh, campaign. And in Guru Maharaj's words, he said, that man came back half converted. That's how he put it. And you can see, there's a picture of him arriving at the dock in Bombay. And Prabhupada's there, Guru Maharaj is there, go, the, the leading devotees of Saraswati, this Saraswati Thakur, this is very exciting for them. They don't know he's been half converted yet. They think he's returning after a successful campaign. <laughs> and so they're waiting for him, they garland, and he's not in the dress of a sannyasi, he's uh, dressed in another way, and they meet with him, and, and all the devotees are wondering, like, so Mars, you know, what's going on with the preaching there? And he says, they ask questions that cannot be answered. And all of them are like, what? You know. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he says, what are those questions? And so he tells one of the questions, Guru Maharaj answers that question. He says, tell, tell us another one. Tell us the question, Guru Maharaj answers the question. Tell us another one. Answer. Guru Maharaj answers all the questions that cannot be answered. And that's when Swami Raj goes, Today, Europe has been defeated by Asia. <laughs> so, why did I mention that? Oh, because, so, and that man, when he's brought, the one who's half converted, to Srila Saraswati Thakur, uh, I got my train back. Uh, Emphasis on London preaching. Yes, yeah. I remember now. It's going there. Okay. <laughs>
platform A. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, he's meeting with Srila Saraswati Thakur, he sees his condition and um, he says to him, what you have is insufficient for them. Hare Krishna. Srila Saraswati Thakur, the Kripaya Hari Kirtan, the Kripaya Hari Kirtan Murti is dumbstruck. And Guru Maharaj said, Professor Sanyal is there and he wants to strangle that man. Literally. They have to like hold him back. And he said, well, Saraswati Thakur is in this drumst dumbstruck condition. Sanyal says, like, you have forgotten the first principle of spiritual life. Send the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu of Rupa Goswami and the teachings of Mahaprabhu and Charitamritam. Guru Padasraya. You take shelter of the lotus feet. Guru Pad. Guru Pad Asrai. You take shelter of the lotus feet of Guru. That's the first principle. So, so Saraswati Thakur in this dumbstruck condition hears him say, Guru Pad, the lotus feet of Guru. And, that's when, and then he comes out and says, my Guru Maharaj, meaning Gorka Shordas Babaji Maharaj, he said, could not write his name. Right? He was functionally illiterate in that way. He said, yet I found all spiritual knowledge in one of the toenails of his holy lotus feet, in the Guru Pad. That was his response to that. So then Saraswati Thakur, they need to uh, select another man. So, immediately he wants Guru Maharaj. All right, if this is what's going to happen, then we have to send uh, Sridhar Maharaj. Right. And that's when Guru Maharaj comes forward and says, I, uh, you know, uh, cannot follow their intonation and also mixing with them. And he said, if you insist, I will go. But I think you have something in mind and I don't think I can deliver that for the, these reasons. So Saraswati Thakur, he knew Guru Maharaj very well too. Once Guru Maharaj was responsible for the construction of some uh, quarters, yeah. like Parmananda Prabhu arranging so many quarters, Guru Maharaj had to arrange some quarters, they're coming to South India. And, and I forget the Bengali Gopal, but, no, but like Saraswati Thakur, when he heard it was Guru Maharaj, uh, Saraswati Thakur was going like, oh no, like it's going to be like real sadhu like, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be very, he's like, you know. And when he gets there, he sees it's actually really wonderful because Guru Maharaj would not impose that. It was beautifully, it sounded like, but beautifully arranged and comfortable and everything. So he's like, oh, like, because a few times he said to Guru Maharaj, improve your dress. Because he would, you know, we see that one picture of him where he looks like the Saragrahi Vaishnav. That's a photo in a, with a photographer, you know, otherwise Guru Maharaj not caring for any of these things and was embarrassed that in his later years he was using a cushion to sit on. He said, when I rode the train, just nothing. He didn't put down a chat, you know, he rode the wooden seat of the trains and he said, look at me now, these, the rolled pillows and the plantation chair with the big, you know, like, you know, th those things embarrassed Guru Maharaj uh, a, a little bit because that was an, not really his nature, right? So, uh, considering different things, um, no, and uh, just on that note too, and the final time, Guru Dev is, how many hot Indian summers did Guru Maharaj have there? 85, let's say. 85 summers in India. And they were moving on to another. So his health is declining. So Srila Gurudev has to convince him to accept an air conditioner. Guru Maharaj fanned himself with a bamboo fan. When you talk to him, he has his elbow here like that. He didn't have someone, sometimes, but really all the time. He's fanning himself. That was his fan, and sometimes ceiling fan. But now he actually needs air conditioner. So Gurudev convinced him and he said, and 
Whereas not only one, but we need to get two because if this one goes down, you need a backup. And, you know. and Guru Maharaj finally relents and he said, the whole of Bengal will be laughing. <laughs> Sridhar, have you heard the news? Huh? Sridhar Maharaj has an air conditioner. <laughs> the whole of Bengal will be laughing. <laughs> so he's like that. You know. And so Saraswati said, all right. And they, it's another story. They continue another time how they decide upon someone else. Right? Because uh, they say, it was Madhava Maharaj. And he said, he's too handsome. And someone said, and the women of England and London, they're like Apsaras. <laughs> Maharaj can testify to that. <laughs> <laughs> and and they said, so don't send, he's too handsome. And I met Madhava Maharaj. And, he was like so beautiful, his form was so beautiful. Uh, so then they decided on Goswami Maharaj, my namesake, Bhakti Saranga Aprakrita Prabhu, because he was a householder and not looking like Madhava Maharaj and uh, reliable and just Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, they all worship Goswami Maharaj, they love him. That's, and revere him so much, and he's so dear to Saraswati. So, so they decide on him, and he's the one who actually goes and initiates Vinodvani, one English lady, and you, you could, we used to visit in London, a nice place actually. But anyway, someone comes and tells Guru Maharaj during this period, said, don't you, don't you want, like, don't you want to be the one? What do you mean? The one who, you know, fulfills Mahaprabhu's prediction, Bhaktivinoda, you know, you'll be the one. They know that. How prestigious this will be. You'll be the one who spreads Krishna consciousness all over the world because on the basis of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prediction, they believe it's going to happen. If Bhaktivinoda Thakur says this is going to happen, it's going to happen. And then if you've been selected for this service, but they're saying, don't you want to be the one? Yeah. And Guru Maharaj said, I have no such aspirations. He said, I, I want to be the servant of a servant of Mahaprabhu. That is my only aspiration. Nothing else. Man. And then another devotee came and said, but you know why Prabhupada wanted you to go? Guru Maharaj said, no, I haven't heard. Why? And he said, Prabhupada said, because he can't be converted. And Guru Maharaj said, that is true. <laughs> okay. So, because of this whole drama, and, so Srila Gurudev, he's in a very sweet way telling Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, he wanted you to go and preach, and particularly in London. So, at that one place, the London Mott, Maharaj, if you just kindly, mercifully, allowed and, and deference to the order of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur if you allow the ma London Mat to be Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Mat. So that's the only Mat outside of India mentioned in the will of Srila Guru Maharaj as being Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Mat. And the secretary there is our Deva Shish Prabhu selected by Srila Gurudev, and it, so it has an extra responsibility there in terms of fidelity to Srila Guru Mar the Mulmat and Srila Guru Maharaj's conception of things. It's ratcheted up to a higher level at the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat in London, and Devashish Prabhu is the secretary there. And oh. continuing that current. He has a mic. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, oh wonderful. We are happy. Jayam Vishnupad Srila Bhakti Rakak Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Yes, I would just re in remembrance of what you were saying, Maharaj, about how Gurudev was happy to be the secretary, didn't want, and, and Guru Maharaj, uh, you know, declined the position of president of mm -hmm. the International Society for Krishna Consciousness once when we were 
together with Srila Gurudev and uh, m maybe in the temple or at some function but together and someone introduced me as the sec as the president oh. of the London uh -oh. Mott <laughs> and Srila Gurudev said no there is only one president of Sri Chaitanya Sarasvati. President Sevaita Chaitanya. Yes. He is the secretary of the Mott. Mm -hmm. And Guru Maharaj, cons uh, Gurudev considered that a more humble um, position. So, and, and also... Um, Who is Lalita Saki? Who is Rup Damodar? The secretary. <laughs> so in one sense, it's humble, but it also, I have to say, it is the position. Guru Maharaj will go so far as to say, the Acharya dealing with Shastra, extracting a Brahminical position, but the secretary is the, subs and, and Srila Gurudev's eyes, the secretary, that's the position where all the seva is done from. But a humble position, a humble secretary. <laughs> <laughs> and, and while we were, I was also remembering while we were together, the first time when I went to the, the Veda Life Festival in Kiev. And uh, Srila Abhidut Maharaj gave me some opportunity to speak there. And on our first um, day on the main stage where the devotees were preaching, then um, we had an hour slot each. And before me, Srila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj, he was to speak before me. So I came to hear his talk before I was going to speak and uh, and I, of course I'm thinking like oh what am I going to say mm -hmm. you know so I'm trying to prepare what I'm going to say and then every point that I wanted to say Madhusudan Maharaj said <laughs> like every single thing even I'm in the sorry, same David. order <laughs> that I was going to say it I wasn't reading your mind <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, then it was my turn to speak and I, oh, I don't know what to say now. But, and I had to say to the people there, this is not at all surprising because we're students of the same master. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Then what he knows, I also know, or what I know, he also knows, by the grace of our Guru Maharaj, and he's taught us how to speak in a particular way. Mm, very nice. So anyhow, um, today is... Um, the appearance day of our beloved Srila Guru Maharaj Om Vishnupad Srila Bhakti Rakak Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj and it's, it's not an easy task to um, tell his glories and especially you know, in light of what I just said that inevitably there must be some repetition of what others have already said then uh, there is no beginning or end to the glories of Srila Guru Maharaj. We think it is our profound feeling that he is the greatest Vaishnava of our age. And not only we think that, because what does it matter what we think, but his own Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, also recognized this in him. When, when he was recounting who uh, was at the assembly of Vaishnavas, Srila Sarasadi Thakur, and he said, present, Shastra Nipuna Shrida Maharaj. That means the genius of scripture, mm -hmm. Shrida Maharaj. Then, and of course we know, now, even though I may leave the world, I know there is one man who can fully represent what I came to give, and that is Shrida Maharaj. So it's not surprising that Sarasvati Thakur wanted Guru Maharaj to preach in the Western world. Not only because he wouldn't be converted, but because he can carry the Siddhanta of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's conception and present it in such a beautiful and heart-capturing way. When we read Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prediction that in the future every man, woman and child must come to embrace the religion of love as given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We believe that it is true. In, in reference to that, we can say, Srila Gurudev said, that part of that prediction, we all know, that the day will come when the fair-skinned people of Europe and America and Russia, they will join with the 
with the devotees of Bengal, with their arms raised high, going to the places of Chaitanya Dev's uh, pastimes, chanting, Jai Sachinandana, Jai Sachinandana. And Srila Gurudev said, when I read that, I thought, yes, it must happen, but not in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But we see that Srila Gurudev himself said, I'm witness to that prophecy coming true. Not only, and not only did he see it coming true, true, but we are part of that, the fulfillment of that, however lowly we may be. We are part of that fulfillment. So then we may say, when Bhaktivinoda Thakur goes on to say, you know, every intelligent man and woman of the world, they must embrace the religion of love as given by Sri Chaitanya Dev as the only religion of this age. We are thinking, yes, maybe, you know, sometimes when we're sitting in our little house, 466 Green Street with, you know, half a dozen or so devotees, we're thinking, really? <laughs> Everybody going by, doing their thing, you know, even the Catholic Church down the road, hundreds of people coming there, and we're just there, a few people there, and we're thinking, really? Is this, well, that will happen? Maybe not in our lifetime, but who knows? You know, we live in an age of wonders and miracles then who knows how and when that may happen. But why I mentioned that is because I think that instrumental to that is the presentation of Krishna consciousness from the lotus mouth of our Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pachala Bhakti Rakak Sri Dadev Goswami Maharaj. His presentation of Krishna consciousness is so heart capturing that no proper thinking person cannot be touched by that. It's so beautiful, it's so natural, and it's so um, captivating, irresistible. Guru Maharaj's Susidanta is, is so uh, just naturally recognizable as the truth. And not just, not just as they say, you know, the harsh truth of life or the harsh reality, but in Srila Guru Maharaj's own words, reality the beautiful it is not, you know, the wake up to the real, harsh reality of the world. No, wake up to reality the beautiful. This is Srila Guru Maharaj's conception. Who will not be charmed by that? Then, as, as Maharaj said at the beginning, Srila Guru Maharaj himself said, I was born to preach Krishna consciousness in the English speaking language. And the English speaking language is the universal language, it's the world. How, whether you like it or whether you don't, it is. Then that's the forum through which Krishna consciousness will be spread. And nobody can present that like Srila Guru Maharaj. Again, as Srila Goswami Maharaj said, so many new things that he's introduced through the English language. Srila Govinda Maharaj said, Many things Guru Maharaj told us, and not all of that I could understand. But when I heard it in English, then I understood it. <laughs> he said, there's one point. But when I read it in Golden Volcano, then oh, now I understand what Guru Maharaj was saying. For so long I didn't understand. Now I understand what Guru Maharaj was saying. So, we really think that, uh, that he is the greatest Vaishnava of our age. And the greatest preacher of Krishna consciousness, Srila Asi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, who spread Krishna consciousness over the, all over the world, he also thought that. As Mar again, as Maharaj said, Prabhupada and Krishna liked that he would prepare me. Then, uh, he didn't say all those things about Srila Guru Maharaj just as a point of formality. It was really his real feeling. He wanted to share that with the world. Who is Srila Guru Maharaj? And the highest conceptions of Krishna consciousness, they are coming from Srila Guru Maharaj and made accessible to us in a very simple and understandable way. Srila Guru Maharaj's presentation of Krishna consciousness is clean and pure and high. And we are trying heart and soul to represent that as best as we can, although entirely flawed, certainly. We must try to represent that as best we can. Then, 
Uh, many times we were with uh, the devotees in Nabadwi uh, at the time of Srila Guru Maharaj's appearance day. Sometimes he would come down and uh, sit with the devotees, not on any big throne or anything like that, just on the, the wooden platform. They made some arrangement there and Guru Maharaj would sit. And I remember <laughs> one year I was there and uh, so many people coming in front of Guru Maharaj and putting money at his feet, you know, like giving money at his feet. And I just became, I say, inspired when I saw that. It was obviously completely emotional. And so I ran to my room and all the money that I had with me, I bought it and I just put it at Guru Maharaj's feet. He didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then the next day I realized, oh, I don't have any money now. <laughs> and, and that was when, they, that year they introduced airport tax at the airport. So, and you had to pay it at the airport, else you can't leave. Even though you've got a ticket, you can't leave to pay it. So, so I had to borrow the money from Srila Guru Maharaj <laughs> to be able to go back, you know, back to the UK. So this is the difference between emotion and devotion. <laughs> But we also remember that Srila Guru Maharaj, he, when he, they were building the, the temple in Madras and they didn't have the funds, they wanted to raise another st story because Saraswati Thakur was coming to visit. So they wanted to show, you know, some progress is being made in the construction. So then Guru Maharaj, he, he um, and other god brothers, they took a loan from the bank and they're thinking, Oh, Prabhupada's not going to be happy if he hears about this. You know, we're taking a loan from the bank. So, anyway, they took the, they took the loan, they built the next floor, and then Sarasri Thakur came and Srila Guru Maharaj said, I had to tell him that we'd taken the loan, and, and I'm waiting for him to chastise me. But rather he said, oh, you have invested your future in Krishna's service. Not only now, but your future too, because now you're going to have to pay that loan back. <laughs> So in, rather than being upset, he was very uh, happy about that. So many things we heard from Srila Guru Maharaj and many things we uh, wanted to share uh, with the world when we heard that from Guru Maharaj in a very, you know, we were very excited about Krishna consciousness to hear these things from Guru Maharaj. Things that we knew that we wouldn't hear anywhere else in the world. When we came to Guru Maharaj, I remember very distinctly, you know, what Guru Maharaj was speaking about the first time I met him. And since, since I was a young, like about 14 years old, I was reading Srila Prabhupada's books. By the time I came to Guru Maharaj, I think I was like 21 years old then. And uh, I'd read all of Prabhupada's books then a few times. And, and that day when I came, Guru Maharaj was speaking about the Queens of Dwarka, I remember. Uh, the whole conversation that he was, the whole talk that he was giving, but I remember thinking, I've not read this in any of Srila Prabhupada's books, and I, you won't hear this anywhere else. You really, you won't hear this anywhere else. And that was my feeling when we came to Guru Maharaj, although I missed Srila Prabhupada. I joined actually in 1977, just after he passed away. And it was, I guess it was so raw for everybody that nobody spoke about it, you know? And, and so, <laughs> and, and, what, and I'm thinking he's still there and he's coming, you know? I wanted to be his disciple. And so I asked one of the, one of the devotees there, when's Prabhupada coming? And, oh, Prabhu, he's not coming. He passed away earlier this year. And oh, I thought it's all over, you know? And I really, I kind of felt that deficiency always. Oh, I didn't, I miss Prabhupada. And then, but when I came to Srila Guru Maharaj, I just thought, here's Prabhupada. Like all those things I'd been reading about for so many years, they weren't just things like in ancient texts, you know, from, you know, bygone ages. They were all real and alive and happening here in Chaitanya Sarasat Mat. That's what I felt like. It was kind of, I, I don't know how I could define that. But that was my feeling. Here, that thing that I've been reading about for so long, here it is, alive. And this is Srila Guru Maharaj's wonderful um, 
the atmosphere that was created in Sri Chaitanya Sarasvati. So it's all an extension of Srila Guru Maharaj. And when I first, the f first day that I came up to meet him, the very thing, thing that struck me most was that he, I was so nervous to come in front of him. You know, I heard what a great sadhu he was and everything. And my experience with gurus previously was a, a very different. And I was like almost terrified coming in front of him. And he was just so human. Like, had, do you have a place to stay? Have you got a mosquito net? Have you taken prasad? I mean, like all of these things, like just ordinary things, but caring. You know, like, oh, he actually cares about everybody. And it was a, a, a new experience for me. And I just wanted to hear from him every day. And even we were with a group of devotees and they used to come up to take all the other devotees on Sankirtan during the day. And when they would come, I'd hide so I didn't have to go with them. And when they, after they'd gone, I'd, I'd sneak up and Guru Maharaj is speaking with Goswami Maharaj and the other sadhu sannyasis from, from you know, the uh, ISKCON mission and so many different devotees. And I'd just sit there at the back and try and hear something. <laughs> and but always feeling a little bit guilty and then one one morning the that Sankirtan party coming back to the temple and uh, and Guru Maharaj stops his talk and he stands up and he goes to the front of his balcony with folded palms listening to the Sankirtan as they're coming through the gate and then he sat back down and he said if the leader of the Sankirtan party is not a Shuddha Vaishnava, it may just be Namaparad. And then he carried on talking. <laughs> and, I th and then I thought, okay, now I feel okay not going on the <laughs> Sankirtan party every day. I'll just come and sit here and listen to him. And really I couldn't, and, I, and sometimes when we would go back to our rooms, then someone would say, well, what was Sridhar speaking about today if they couldn't be there? can't remember, can't remember a thing, you know, and really I couldn't remember anything at all. But then when something like, you know, relevant to that came up, I said, oh yeah, Sri Maharaj was just speaking about that and this is what he said and I could remember, like as it became relevant to, you know, what we were discussing. Anyway, Srila Govinda Maharaj, he said, you know, just one word from Guru Maharaj can make us, a, a, make us his slave forever. Mm -hmm. And we really feel that that's true. And, you know, we feel completely um, in awe that we're even here, that we even came here. You know, when I came to Guru Maharaj, I didn't know anything about who he was. Pre uh, previously in ISKCON, I was in initiated by one of their gurus there. And I used to help him in the morning when he was doing his puja. And sometimes he would play it like tape recording. And, uh, and it was Guru Maharaj, he's playing these tape recordings of Guru Maharaj, early recordings. And I would say, oh, who's that? And he said, this is Guru Maharaj's godbrother, a little like cautiously, he would say. So, oh, okay, and I would listen to that while, while I was helping him. I didn't even connect the two. When, when I came to Chaitanya Sarasvati Mahal, I didn't even connect that till I heard Guru Maharaj. Oh, oh that's the same person who was on that tape that is playing. Oh, now, I, oh, okay. Anyway, really, still, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know. And, it, you know, even years later, I think perhaps I don't know who he was. Mm. But, you know, we think that um, we may not know the glories of Srila Guru Maharaj, but there are devotees who know the glories of Srila Guru Maharaj. And we want to always be in their association. We want to hear from those devotees. My, my own experience, you know, that I would go to stay with Guru Maharaj every year from 1982 till his passing in 1988. Maybe sometimes one week, maybe sometimes six months, but every year. And I'm thinking, you know, oh, I know, Srila Sridhar Maharaj. And then, uh, and, you know, it's, you can say maybe six years association with Guru Maharaj. But with, when, with Srila Gurudev, over 25 years association with him. And in those 25 years with Srila Gurudev, 
I learned more about Srila Guru Maharaj than I ever did in the personal association of Srila Guru Maharaj. So I can say, you know, like with my hand on my heart, that substantially I consider Srila Govinda Maharaj as my guru. And I don't think that Srila Guru Maharaj would be unhappy that I said that. I think he'd be more happy that I said that. And maybe not everybody knows, but actually, only by the intervention of Srila Gurudev did Srila Guru Maharaj accept us as his disciples. I'm at the fag end of my life. How can I help them? How much longer I will live? I do not know. And when I'm gone, who will take care of them? Srila Govinda Maharaj says, I'll take care of them, Maharaj. Then with that, Srila Guru, Mah Srila Guru Maharaj accepted us, knowing that, you know, they'll be okay with Srila Gurudev, uh, with Srila Govinda Maharaj to care for them when I'm gone. Then, and really, so much I heard of Guru Maharaj's uh, Siddhanta from Srila Gurudev then I still feel, um, <laughs> you know, like a, an imposter with all the devotees here. I really don't feel like even I should be here. But, you know, as we were discussing the other day, we just hold on. Srila Gurudev said to me once, in London, he said, as lo if, who will stay in the line of Srila Guru Maharaj? They must get the service of Rupa Manjari. What do you think? He said. I said, I said, Maharaj, I'm sure what you say is, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I'm sure if you say that, then it's true. But my reflection on that afterwards was, okay, what does that mean to be in the line of Srila Guru Maharaj? Does it just mean that you, you're just there? You just stuck around? Or is it something deeper than that? And I think it is something much deeper than that. But, by the grace of Srila Gurudev, sometimes just that you stuck around was enough for him, you know. He wants everybody to come to Guru Maharaj. He wants, every, he wants to bring everyone to Guru Maharaj from the beginning to the end. That was what was his desire, his heart, his mission. And he took us all in and brought us to the lotus feet of Srila Guru Maharaj. And somehow or another, we're still here today. But our duty to try and praise Guru Maharaj, what will we say? Only we can say that we aspire to be the servant of his servant servants. And really to understand what that means. It is not just, you know, hyperbole or some like poetic expression. Das, das, das. It's the reality. It's really what we're aspiring for. And if we're not aspiring for that, we haven't understood what Srila Guru Maharaj came to teach. What else can we aspire for in, the, in this world or any world? So there I want to finish. Jai Om Vishnupad. Bhakti Rakak Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Srila Guru Maharaj Vyasa Puja Titi Ki Jai. Srila Bhakti Rakak Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj Abhi Bab Maha Mahotsav Ki Jai. Nitai Gaura Premanandi Hari Hari Vavancha Kalpa Tarubis Cha Kripa Sin Rubyeva Cha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnava Bio Namo Nama. Jai Shipad Deva Shish Prabhu Ki Jai, Secretary of the London Chapter of Sri Chaitanya Sarasarma. <clears throat> when Srila Guru Maharaj would be asked to distinguish himself from others, we can understand what is held in common, but is there some uh, uniquely distinguishing you know, characteristics, quality, traits, like one of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada asked him that. And, and I mean, in, in simple words, is to say, what are you giving that he's not giving? Is more or less the way it came out. You know. <clears throat> and so Srila Guru Maharaj asked me to arrange to talk to him privately. You, you see, there's his room, veranda, and you see that little footbridge that goes under the top and it's, Really, there's a space where it's 
there's the domes. It's above the Nath Mandir. So I arranged a chair there with Srila Guru Maharaj and brought this leading devotee from there. Who we can say was sincerely asking this and <clears throat> I was uh, eager to see how Srila Guru Maharaj would answer that too. And also that he told me to bring the chair and do it in a private place. And, and uh, Srila Guru Maharaj gave his Gayatri explanation. So we may think, oh, you mean this interpretation of the... In the history of our Sampradaya, we can say in the history, since when that was uh, spoken, when Brahma heard the uh, flute song of Krishna and his eight ear holes and it came out of him, since that moment, no such explanation has been given, interpretation along these lines. Sometimes Guru Maharaj would say that Jiva Goswami hinted at this somewhere, but I can't find it. No, 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 no. This is no no record. This is a very private meeting. Right. Later that will come, but so uh, um, that was his way. And, and so what I'm trying to say is, think of that in the history of the sampradaya, since the moment this appeared, no one has been able to extract radha dasyam from there. Right. And that is the, always the, the concluding point for Srila Guru Maharaj. As he would say about Srila Saraswati Thakur, wherever his talk started, it always ended in Radha Dasyam and with praise of Rupa and Raghunath. Right. Like Rupa Raghunatha Pade Jaras Chaitanya Charitam Rita Kohe Krishna Das. And we think, why didn't he there put Rupa and Sanatan? He could have, but it says Rupa and Raghunath. Because what we told yesterday from Srup Damodar, Raghunath Das Goswami, this is coming to Krishna Das, and of course it's the Rupa Nuga line. So Rupa and Raghunath. That's how his lectures would conclude, Srila Saraswati Thakur. And praise of Radha Dasyam and the line of Rupa Raghunath, may that continue in this world. So there's the concept of a gift and the giver and also who shall receive that. So, Srila <coughs> Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Gurudev has mentioned this many times, he said that attracted to the wealth of the melted heart of Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the cause of the descent of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in this world. As Guru Maharaj was telling, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had like seven disciples, five to seven disciples. And some, you know, as the saying goes, you know, qualified in different ways and, um, but like that, five to seven, variously. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the, you know, Guru Dham, Granta Dham, Gaura Dham, Nama Dham, Uda, Bhakti Vinoda, Bhakti Vinoda, Bhakti Dham, Buri Dham, Bande, Bhakti Vinoda, Dham, Uda. The giver of everything, the course corrector of the Sampradaya. Right? It's lost. Back to the Kalena Nashta that's where he starts. It's lost. It's broken. It's in shambles. And uh, uh, varieties of Sahajaism, Casco Swan, like all the uh, imitation, of so many things. That's why he accepted uh, Tota Ram Das Babaji's analysis, what was it, 14 Sahajaism, Aal Baal, Karta Baja, Saki Baki, etc. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he performs the course correction, because what did he say in the Bhagavad? Yes, the truth is invariably, inevitably, converted into error and falsity. And you think, oh, that's, that's so, um, you know, uh, depressing and, and sad to hear and discouraging. And you think, no, and on account of that, new revelation is continually necessary 
to restore the truth to its former position. So that's the positive side. That, it draws this sort of necessity, and that comes with each generation. There's no magic formula for continuation, right? This way or that way or set up your organization. If there were, everyone would be doing that. There isn't. And we have Krishna in the Gita and Krishna in the Bhagavatam saying that from time to time it goes off and sometimes so far off that religion turns into irreligion. Right? And so the course correction, the new revelation of the day that's necessary to bring things back, that continue the current. Right? Guru Maharaj is all about substance and form, substance over form, that, you know, na she kaj, na ni she she kaj. What does it mean that your nose is working, that you're breathing? The breath that's going through is more important than the external aspect of that. So, so many examples, even, and, and said, that is life-saving current for us. And he said, like the Ganga or river, sometimes it's very narrow and sometimes it's very wide. There were great devotees. When Guru Maharaj said, there are no big mantras for big gurus and little mantras for little gurus, he wasn't saying there are no big gurus. That's not what he's saying. He's saying there are big gurus. And there are little gurus, but the mantra is the same for both of them. Om Ajnana Timran Dasya, etc. He's not saying they're all equal. That the current, so sometimes the current is very narrow, sometimes it's very wide, but we're dependent upon that current. So we, we're eager to search for traces of that current. He's saying one whose eye is awakened will find that and acknowledge that. Right? So, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's, you know, what did he say? You know, Bhakti Shastragya Samrajam Radha Rasa Shuddha Nidhim. This current, the Radha Rasa Shuddha Nidhi, what is it? And, you know, oceanic, talking about magnitude. It's an oceanic current of Radha Rasa Shuddha Nidhi descending from Bhaktivinoda Thakur into this world. Right? If he can uh, uh, enlighten the Mahajans through his interpretation of the Gita, then who is Bhaktivinoda Thakur? Right? But this wealth that he brings down from the upper world into this plane needs a distributor. Right? So Gurudam, all those gifts are listed, but when you and it says, he gave us guru. That means Srila Saraswati Thakur, the distributor of all of this wealth, this wealth of inconceivable magnitude, which, and, and what does Guru Maharaj say in his prayer? Uh, he, he doesn't say, and you are equal to Ramanuja and Madhva. The translation there is not adequate. He's saying, you have exceeded Ramanuja and Madhva. You are greater than them. Your gift is greater than what they have given. That's what Guru Maharaj is saying there, right? And he says, your glories do not stop there or whatever is given there. What he's telling us is the gift of Bhaktivinoda Thakur exceeds what was given by Sampradayaka charges like Ramanuja and Madhva. That's his perception of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And so, Srila Saraswati Thakur, you know, his, and interesting, like Guru Maharaj, their inclination is near Jan Bhajan. Right? He's actually qualified for that. But Guru Dev once said, before someone goes in the wrong direction, he said, Guru Maharaj's opinion is even if you're qualified, you shouldn't do it. So shut that door. Not about whether you're qualified or not. He said, his opinion is even if you're qualified, you don't do it. We heard that in the first week in ISKCON, that Prabhupada said the higher devotees don't do certain things lest the, uh, mis the lower section be misled right, by, through imitation. So Saraswati Thakur, three lakhs of Krishna Nam and Nirjan Bhajan descended from Goloka, Bhaktivinoda descended from Goloka right, and uh, 
tasked with Bhaktivinoda Thakur of distribution. So he has to descend from the Maha Bhagavad position to the Madhyam Bhagavad position to interact with others. Otherwise, everything's properly adjusted. Right? Lokanath Goswami, the Loda, upside down. He's not going to get involved in anything. So, Bhaktivinoda Saraswati Thakur has to come down to the Madhyam position to uh, discriminate and deal with people. Don't do this, do this, you know, Prakrita Rasa Shatta Dushini. Uh, you know. Deo na, habe na, bolo na, you know, not, don't do this, don't do, a hundred no's. Why? To make it abundantly clear what yes, what, what the real thing is, to dismiss all the things that it is not. Anyway, he comes down to that position and he's uh, also, you know, Saraswatim, uh, Siddhanta Nidim, an ocean of Bhakti Siddhanta, is, and that current is flowing through him with great intensity. As he told Saki Turan Babu and others, and who he mentioned in this time, um, that um, saw him in those early days, Keshava Maharaj, he and a couple of them, and he'd be pounding on the table with his Krishna Katha and Gaur Katha. And his face was becoming flush pink, and he looked like a intense pink lotus flower. Not like a lotus flower, but a very intense lotus flower. And this beautiful expression. And he said, some things he said we could understand, most things he was saying we could not understand, but the, what we knew for certain is he was trying to forcibly make us taste some nectarine substance. And these are qualified men, not people who know nothing, you know, who were recruited from the street, they're Sanskritians, they're Gaudiya Vaishnavas, and, and his level of intensity and the depth of his conception is such as they can't fathom it entirely, but they're in awe of him and his intensity, and they want to offer themselves in service to him. Right? When he, and he had one servitor who could arrange for all the programs, but he was as Guru said, everyone has some flaw, some fault. Uh, devotees were uh, sometimes critical of him, or um, even to the point of wanting Saraswati Tagore to oust him. And Saraswati Tagore said, all of you can leave, and I only need him. Meaning, Kunja Babu, Kunja Bihari, Das Vidyabhusha, and Srila Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj. He said that of him. He used to call him the co-founder of Sri Gaudiyamat, Prabhupada Prashta the one who's most dear to Prabhupada. He said, all of you, can, I don't need any of you. I don't need bead counters, right? You counted so many beads today, right? Uh, uh, neophyte practitioners. He said, I need an audience. That's what I need. And he gets me an audience. So all, if you have a problem with that, you can all leave. And just he will remain with me and get me an audience of intelligent hearers. Right? Sukriti Ban, Sumedasa of refined theistic intellect who can appreciate these things. So, we know something of the missionary spirit of Saraswati Thakur infused into his disciples, Vilasatu Ridinityam, Bhakti Siddhanta Bani, and Guru Maharaj's prayer. So, he's come to give something, to distribute something. And we heard the other day him speak of, you know, why he didn't uh, appoint a successor, Guru said, he avoided, because he felt his imparted grace to his disciples, that that would come out naturally in time, in varying levels of realization and spiritual substance. So he didn't indicate any particular one, and it's noteworthy that Prabhupada and Guru were among them, right? other than the, the mystic power transmit, he didn't formally indicate. And he, he said, his imparted grace received by his phone, that that will express itself in time and then it will become apparent. Uh, and people will, you know, the inspired side of the Vaishnava is Sri Guru. They'll appreciate that and, and that'll resonate in their hearts and they'll offer themselves in service there. 
And we say when that Krishna, the uh, Bhagavad Slok about the 18,000 ray appearing, so after the disappearance of Srila Saraswati Thakur, they had a big meeting of all of his disciples and they're deciding, how will we proceed now? Right. So they're asking the different senior Maharajas there, how, will, how are we going to go on now that our Guru, our Prabhupada has left the world? Right. And he, this Nimi Maharaj, Gabishta Nimi, he came over this, Krishna Swadamo, and gave a rousing talk about, now the, now the Bhagavatam, is, so through the Bhagavat, the book, that will give light, and the devotees are very uh, inspired by the Maharaj's talk, and, and they turn to Guru Maharaj and say, what say you, Sridhar Maharaj? And he says, we are not Sikhs, the Sikhs, they, have the, they bring this big book out, yeah. the Granth Sahib, you know. And the Guru said, we are not Sikhs. He said, there's the book Bhagwat and the person Bhagwat. He said, so that person who's extracting from the Bhagwat, who's the, the and, and, and inspiring us with devotional uh, aspiration, the, the, the senior most Vaishnava, that's where we will get direction. Not that we're going to pass this book out to everybody and, you know, we're the Protestant version of uh, whatever. <laughs> so, that was Guru Maharaj's response. Right. The Vaishnava. In one place it says, in Kali Yuga there's just only two things, Vaishnavas and Vaishnava scriptures. And I thought, it's a way of saying there's only one thing, Vaishnavas. Because without the Vaishnavas, you will not properly understand Vaishnava scriptures. In fact, you will most likely grossly misinterpret them to your own detriment. Right. So the Vaishnava. And Guru said, when he first came, he thought, someday you were told, Guru Padasraya, as you told earlier, we have to accept Guru, and someday my heart's inner hankering for a direct connection with Krishna will be uh, satisfied. He said, but he came to understand in time, no, the Vaishnava is all in all, right? It's getting from Professor Sanyal, from others, they're helping him embrace this concept, that the Vaishnava is all in all. Right? So, Srila Saraswati Thakur, he, we we're told, when Guru Maharaj started coming to Sri Gaudiamat and hearing his talks, that his hearing was so acute that one man thought he was a spy. Remember, this is uh, the Indian independence movement. There's different political movements. And they're afraid that in the, as they still remain, that in the guise of religious meetings, really some sort of political agenda is going on. So this man thought he's from the CID or whatever, you know, like he's a, Guru Mars is a spy who's been sent to monitor Saraswati Thakur's content in his talks. And why did he say that? He said, nobody listens like that. <laughs> so indirectly, it was a great comment. And, and so Guru Maharaj comes one time, again for the evening lecture, and that man said, excuse me, uh, you will not be allowed to attend the program this evening. So he's not going to let Guru Maharaj go to hear from Saraswati. He blocks him. And Guru Maharaj is, of course, offended. He's insulted. And he's thinking, I'm thinking he's the person, he's the one, but some of those surrounding him are intolerable. And they're, they're uh, an obstruction. So he goes for a walk. And remember, the Hoogli is the Ganga, but yet there's a place, and Maharaj knows, and Kolkata, they call it Ganga Ghat. Still where people go to, when they want to bathe in the Ganga, they go there, but there's, it's, so he's there. And he's also walking along and thinking. And he thinks, Saraswati Tagore, he is that person who has what I'm seeking and what I need, that cannot be denied. It is him, he's the one. But those others surrounding him, that are intolerable, I will tolerate them. My desire for his connection will lead me to tolerate all those surrounding him. So, he's joined Sri Gaudiya Mat 
at the time of his initiation, his name was Ramendra Chandra Bhattacharya. His mother, there's some pregnancy complications, so he's told to worship Ram and Ram Nam, you know, Rama Rama, Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Paksha, Rakshamam. So when Guru Maharaj is born, she gives the name Ramendra Chandra with some tip of the topi to uh, Ramachandra. Uh, and um, also on this point, Srila Gurudev expressed in some poetry somewhere that because on this day is also Bira Chandra Prabhu appearance. So Gurudev said that when you hear of Srila Guru Maharaj, that he's, and he, as expressed there, as dharmic as Ramachandra, you might think that that means he is inflexible, maybe insensitive, or not kind or merciful. But he's saying, so my Guru Maharaj, he's as dharmic as Ramachandra, and he's more merciful than Bira Chandra Prabhu. Right? So we're told Nityananda is the Kripa avatar, and if it can be conceived, is anyone more merciful than he? It's Bira Chandra Prabhu, his son. And what does Gurudev say? My Guru Maharaj, Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Rakak, Sridhar Dev Goswami, he's more merciful than Bira Chandra Prabhu. And then you say, well, what is the evidence of that? Srila Gurudev said, that he saved me. <laughs> so, when his name is Ramendra Chandra Bhattacharya, Sanskrit speaking Brahmin, they speak conver a conversational Sanskrit. Even his aunties, he had to stay with one auntie a couple of years. And he was, I don't know, like 10 or something. And she said, young man, I detect some lack of appreciation you, uh, view of the ladies section. <laughs> and he said, I have read the scriptures, I have read things in Shastra. <laughs> and she said, oh, really? She said, uh, have you read this? And she can also speak Sanskrit. And she quotes to him a verse that says, all ladies shall be seen as Lakshmi, or extensions of Lakshmi Devi. And Guru Omar said, then I had to readjust my thinking. Because <laughs> he's regulated by Shastra. So when she told him that, young man, you know, he readjusted himself. Yeah. So when Saraswati Thakur is giving his name, what does he say? Change Ramendra Chandra but to Ramendra Sundar becomes his name. And like we told, devotees ask. I mean, no, it was not one of Srila Gurudev's favorite things to be asked after giving Harinam. When someone said, what does my name mean? Oh, yes. Once he said, what was your name before? And they said, Matthew. And he said, oh, uh, what does that mean? And he said, messenger of God. Something, I forget, you know, don't hold it. And since he answered, Gurudev said, all right, I'll, you know. So, <laughs> so then he, he, would, he wanted to know what, you know, like the Maha Mantra means. Or but when he answered what his name meant, Gurudev said, oh, you know, because like usually I get them with that when <laughs> they don't know what their own name is. <laughs> so, but Guru Maharaj, it's, it's natural. If Guru Maharaj himself asked him, and my name, you know, or, but he didn't just say, what is my name mean? Because he knows that, actually. He said, but here, this Rama, you're saying Ramendra, so, this Rama, how should I understand that? And that's when Saraswati Tagore said, Raman Radha, Radha Raman, means the lover of Srimati Radharani. But Guru Maharaj, I heard him say recently too, it means the way she sees Krishna, which is only available through her. Right? So, uh, so when Ananta Vasudev Prabhu and the others said, so when you got her, what did Prabhupada say to you? And he told him what he said, and he said, and some these uh, Madhura Rasa things. He said, Vasudeva said, oh, you're very fortunate. You heard that from Prabhupada. And when Guru Maharaj joined the preaching parties, um, 
some, uh, one party that Saraswati Tagore used to call his, you know, it was like my party, was Guru Maharaj, Goswami Maharaj, and Madhava Maharaj. Imagine that, right? And, and, and Swami Maharaj Prabhupada would invite them to his house for a program, mm. right? Guru Maharaj would give the talk, Madhava Maharaj, I think, would uh, sing, and, 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 Guru Maharaj, and Goswami Maharaj would collect. No one could escape him. <laughs> He's the one on Brihaspati Barbella when you shouldn't engage in financial transactions. He was always collecting at that time because it is said one may incur financial loss. So he's playing it the other way. <laughs> and he's uh, supremely clever. And if I said some glorification of him on this day, it would be very pleasing to Srila Guru Maharaj and Srila Gurudev. And he once went to this Rani, a queen, to get a donation, but the king did not approve. So he couldn't meet with her directly. So she arranged their staying in a hotel room nearby. And she cannot meet with him, but she sends her attendant. And the attendant comes and says, so she wants to know, is there anything that you need? And he's saying, we have everything, but I need a pillow. I don't have a pillow. You can tell her that. Everything is here, but I need a pillow. Oh, and he goes back, tells the queen. And then this pillowcase comes back full of rupees. <laughs> so he's very clever. So anyway, so, um, so Srila Guru Maharaj, when the, these preaching, part, they will start singing the glories of Srila Guru Maharaj to Srila Saraswati Thakur. Right? After him being in uh, uh, Baranasi, which Maharaj I forget at the moment, but he said, he said, you'll be happy to know. It may have been Madhava Maharaj. He said, whether it's with an ancient Sans Vedic Sanskritian or a modern educated European, you're being perfectly represented by him like across the spectrum, in any context, he can perfectly represent you with his examples, etc. And, and so he heard that. And then on the banks of the Godavari, Guru Maharaj was giving Ramananda Sambad interpretations, which he said is the source of everything for him. It's the source of his ontological method. The Iho Bhaya Agigahuhar, you know, Stani Sita Shruti Dham Banamobir, then Iho Hoi Agigahuhar. That's acceptable. Go deeper, dive deep in the reality is the Ramananda Sambad. The Ramananda Sambad is the deep dive into reality. So he's expert at that, and Banmar said one lecture he gave there was the greatest lecture ever given in the history of the world. That was his opinion. And Guru Maharaj said, and it wasn't a long one. You know? <laughs> so he told that to Saraswati Thakur. He just gave the greatest lecture in the history of the world on the banks of the Godavari. I highly recommend that you give him sannyas. So on his recommendation, Srila Saraswati Thakur gave him sannyas. But a little before that, he changed his name to Ramananda Das. And you see that in the Prema Dhamma Deva Stotram, Srila Guru Maharaj toward the end saying, you know, thus sings Ramananda, the Ramananda Das. So Saraswati Thakur indicating, although it's in the Charitamrita, and saying, Ek Ramananda. When Mahaprabhu sent Pradumna Misra to hear from Ramananda Roy, and he came back a little um, puzzled. Um, and Mahaprabhu said, no, you don't understand. Like, I hear from him, right? He's the one, he's my Raghamarg Diksha Guru, you know. And there's Ek Raman, there's only one. And it looks like he's a human being, but he's not. He's, it, he, every aspect of him is divine. So be very cautious how you perceive him. And so, who is he hearing? You can say, these things about 
Radha, Krishna and Braja Gopis from a Grihastha. Right? He's in Grihastha Ashram. Right? So the sannyasi listens to the Grihastha. He gets instructed on Raga Marg from the Grihastha. Kiba Vipra, Kiba Nyasi, Shudra Kene Noi, Jay Krishna Tattva Veta, Se Guru Hoy. These things are real. They're not uh, anecdotal. So Mahaprabhu, he gets Raga Marg Diksha and instruction, Raga Rasa Shiksha from the Grihasta Ramananda. So he's telling Pradhan Marisa. No, there's Ek Ramananda. You hear from him as I heard from him, which he happily does and comes back with the greatest appreciation. And when he said, what would you like to hear? And he said, what you told Mahaprabhu on the banks of the Godavari? <laughs> Ramana, ah, so that certificate is there from Srila Saraswati Thakur. In other words, Ek Ramananda, well, here, here's the Ek Ramananda, that is this disciple of mine. He's the Ek, he's the one you hear from. And then what is he name? When he gives him sannyas, Bhakti Rakkak Sridhar. Was the meaning of that? Sridhar, Sridhar Swami, Sridhar, I used to quote this to Guru when I'd write him letters and, and sometimes say it to him personally and he and Gurudev would like it and smile a lot. And I'd say, Sridhar Swami Prasade Bhagavata Jani, Jagat Guru Sridhar Swami Guru Kori Mani. Right? Where when the arrogant Balababhata says to Mahaprabhu, you know, I can explain the Bhagavatam. My Bhagavad explanation surpasses Sridhar Swami, who is considered the principal commentator. And that's when Mahaprabhu said, one who does not accept the Swami or Shami in Bengali is a prostitute, because it also means husband. That's Mahaprabhu's answer to him. And then he says, Sridhar Swami Prashade, Bhagavata. The only way we know Bhagavatam is by the mercy of Sridhar Swami. Jagat Guru Sridhar Swami, Guru Korimans. Therefore, I accept him as Jagat Guru. Mahaprabhu is giving that endorsement. So when Saraswati Thakur gives Srila Guru Maharaj the name Sridhar, he means to say, he, his comment is above all others. He, you, you go to him, you hear from him. He's in the premier position of all interpreters, all commentators. And if you know a guru by his disciples, who, who accepts him as guru? Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Raj, His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, they both accept him as their guru, right? as being in the, the, the premier position. Right? So Saraswati Thakur gives him that name, right? and Rukkuk, right? So when I began promoting Guru Mahārāj in the Western world and making these tapes and saying that these terms are a little unfamiliar, or uh, odd sounding in the Western world. So I, th I thought like, how could I represent Bhakti Rakak? Okay. So then I thought, the guardian of devotion. Okay. The guardian, he will be the, known as the guardian of devotion. So I asked Srila Gurumars and Srila Gurudev, can I in limited context, refer to Srila, for publication, can I refer to him as the guardian of devotion? And to my happiness, they happily uh, accepted that. And Guru Maharaj said in my final meeting with him, he said, you've said so many things about me, like he liked it. And he said, and this guardian of devotion, and, and like, um, you know, he was uh, expressing appreciation for that because it's actually accurate. It's ontologically, it's like his quality of things, it's ontologically accurate and it's poetic in expression, the guardian of devotion. Right. So he accepts, so he's Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami. Dev Goswami means a Brahmin Goswami. Right. Guru, that Dev must be there for Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev, not for others. Right. So, so Srila Guru Maharaj, um, and we see in Sri Gaudiamat, so many things happens, happens between the guru and the disciples, things come up, you know. 
someone comes out of Saraswati, Banmar is one going, comes out of Saraswati Thakur's room, and Saraswati Thakur giving praise. There's not just one disciple that's being praised. We know the Vaishnavas, they're Kripa Sindhu, they're praising so everyone. And, and, some, and some of it substantially, some of it less substantial, but there, and he comes out of the room like a proud peacock, and all the devotees, Guru Maharaj is over in the corner, and the devotees are saying like, oh, so my, what? They can see he's kind of glowing. And he's saying, well, Prabhupada, you know, he said this about me. I'm not saying, but you know, he said. There's a certain way they do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, and uh, anything else? Well, then he told you know. I mean, it's you know, Prabhupada something, but he did say I'm kind of you know, you know. <laughs> and he's going, and Guru Maharaj over in the corner starts saying something in Sanskrit, and then some of the other devotees start going, <laughs> you know, they like start la they can't control their laughter, and they're going, and he's Ban Maharaj is not a Sanskrit. He's like, what is he saying? What is, and no one wants to say what he's saying. Then finally it's told him, he's quoting the verse from the Bhagavatam, from the Rasa Leela, that says, and each gopi thought Krishna was hers and hers alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, at different times, uh, and when he's on that preaching party, it's uh, the Chandi, the, where they're worshipping Chandi, and there's a certain the Chandi book you have to read and there's a certain way to do it and there's three on the party and Guru Maharaj at the time is the low man, you know, the newcomer, the white class. So he's, they go like, tell them that we're here to, you know, they want to preach them, get a donation. Right? He's sent away, you know, they go, no, they're reading Chandi and you can't interrupt that. And there's spe very special, uh, you know, procedures for doing this. So when that's done, then he can meet with you. And then Guru Maharaj tells that man that, do you hear what's being said? What? He's saying, first of all, it says, this reading of Chandi must be brief. It cannot be extensive. Otherwise, there's a fault. And it's told, when you read this, you cannot move your head to the left and to the right. You can only look in the forward one. And if you don't do that, you will get a highly inauspicious result. So the man, he goes and this, he's telling. And so then the man comes over and like, you have saved me. <laughs> you know. And then he gives a, a big donation to them all. And he tells the other Gaudiya man, pointing to the groom, he said, this man knows everything. <laughs> So, when it comes back to Saraswati Thakur, on different occasions, he says, Sridharam Sakalabeti, that Sridhar knows everything. So, that, our Srila Guru Maharaj, he's, uh, he wants to capture Srila Saraswati Thakur's love and affection. Every disciple wants that. Right? From, it's natural. He also wanted that. And, he, and that capturing aspect, like in the Nikila Bhuvana Maya slok, he said, I think I captured my Gurudev there in a cage of poetry. He said, just like when they capture a royal Bengal tiger and they put him in a cage, and then the people go like, oh. You know, they come up and you get to see this gorgeous, majestic animal pacing, back, you know, in a cage. And he's saying, I captured my Guru Maharaj in a cage of poetry. Guru Maharaj speaks, thinks, talks, right, like this. So, his, his strategy, how to capture Saraswati Thakur? Although he's initiated by Gorka Shordas Babaji Maharaj, Guru Maharaj said, really, his substantial guru is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is everything to him. And of course, we hear the three of them in that kunjan, the upper world, Kamala, Priya, Nayanam, you know, what is that? Uh, guna Manjuri, Gorima, Guna Haribasana, Bayanam, Kamala, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Guna Manjuri, Gorka, Shordas, Babaji Maharaj, and Nayana Mani Manjuri, Srila Bhakti, Siddhanta, Saraswati Thakur, they're there. But Guru Maharaj wants to uh, please Saraswati Thakur, he's thinking, if I will glorify Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that is the way. 
who's his everything, if I will properly, not in a, a, a sentimental way or a shallow, a cheap way, these divine terms, use them cheaply, throw them about, but, but substantially, that will please Phila Saraswati Thakur. Then I'll get the grace of my Gurudev. So he composes the Bhaktivinoda Viraha Dasakam, which I mentioned part of one verse before, saying, you've exceeded Madhva and Ramanuja. Your glories don't stop that. You've, gone, you've passed them. Why? Just on that point. Because he's giving uh, the, uh, like when with Vasudev Prabhu challenging Saraswati Thakur, saying he's giving what's not given in the Vedas. And we're saying, what are the Vedas? They're the statements of the rishis, drishi, who are seeing, experiencing the truth. So it's mainly Brahman, some Paramatma, and he said, and a hint of Bhagavan. And he said, and our Guru Maharaj and Bhaktivinoda Thakur, they're giving the full-fledged theistic Krishna conception as presented by Gauranga Mahaprabhu, who's none other than the divine combination of Radha and Krishna. So they've, they've exceeded what they were, the Vedas are giving. Saying, it's not found in the Vedas. So, uh, Srila Saraswati Thakur, we hear that he always visits the Gaudiamat printing press and he likes to look at the proofs of the various books. They saw him reading proofs of the Chaitanya Bhagwat, Bhagwat and waves of different ecstatic symptoms were visible in his divine form. Right? Just overlooking, like to a proof from a printing press. And then they have their magazines and then he comes up to this one page that's going to be published. It's the Bhaktivinoda Viraha Dasakam. And he's reading this. And uh, he says, he's captured by what he's reading, particularly one song. He said, who's written this? And someone says, Sridhar Maharaj. And that's when he says, oh, no, Sridhar Maharaj has not written this. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written this through him. And what is that verse? Sri Gauranamatam Swarupa Viditam Rupa Grajain Adritam Rupa Dye Parivesitam Raghuganai Ashwaditam Sevitam Jiva Dye Abharakshitam Shukra Shiva Brahma Samanitam Sri Radha Padasevan Amritam Aho Tadatumi Shobhavan Oh Bhaktivinoda Thakur, this is your gift to the world in the form of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Sri Gauranamatam Swarupa Viditam we told you, the, the only person who knows fully the interior reason for the descent of Mahaprabhu is Swarup Damodar. So Kaviraj Goswami says, if anyone knows anything substantially about Mahaprabhu, they must have heard it from Swarup Damodar. Guru Maharaj is here saying the same thing. Rupa Goswami Chaitanya Stakam, Swarupam Bibranam Jagatatulyam, the incomparable Swarup Damodar. So Guru Maharaj, same, Rupa Goswami, Kaviraj Goswami, same current, same quality of that current. This is what he's seeing, Srila Saraswati Thakur. And, and this verse he's saying, what is the gift of Bhaktivinoda Thakur? What brought me down in this world? What I'm trying to give, he has increased uh, eagerness in, uh, to see what is given there. And he's saying, Sri Gaurana Swarupa Viditam, Rupa Grajain Adritam. And that substance is worshipped by Srila Sanatan Goswami Prabhu, the elder brother of Rupa Goswami. Sanatan Goswami will be very happy if you connect him with Rupa. So if you say Rupa Agrida, the elder brother, then he's very happy to hear the name of Rupa. Rupa Agrida, Rupa Dye Puribeshita. And that Rupa, this, and this Rupa Nuga line is distributing, the, the flow is there, this current. Right? He's distributing uh, to other Rupa Dye Paribeshita and serving it in that way through extension. Ragugunai means Ragugan here means Ragu, the Ragu group. By, that means Raghunath Das Goswami, who means Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Right? That section, who the charyatamritam comes down. It's all consistent. It's this one chinmoy thread that's coming down. So he's in Raghugunai Ashwaditam Shavit. And they're, so they're relishing this divine substance. 
And what is happening in the process, it is becoming even more tasteful and relishable. And they're extending that to others. They're bringing others into this. Jiva Dye Abharakshitam and Jiva Goswami Prabhu and Baladeva Dibhushan Prabhu, they are like Rakkak. Jiva Dye Abharakshitam, Rakkak. Guardians, protectors from those who would adulterate it, uh, counterfeit it, uh, challenge its authenticity. That is their seva to what is being given to they're protecting this, this, this divine current. Jiva, uh, and Brahma, Sukha, Shiva, and Guru Maharaj later added Uddhava, like Asamaho, Chananarino, Jishama, Hangshang. They're all aspiring for a drop of this divine substance. Who can say these things? Who can write, who can weigh, value, properly assess, perfectly, all the, the, afford, the this group, perfectly, uh, present them, their individual characteristics, qualities, contributions, spiritual substance, perfectly, and then sum it all up by saying, so, and, and it's also with uh, poetic dexterity and, 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 and the uh, and drama, and it's building to a crescendo to a point. Saying, and Brahma, Shiva, Sukhano, they all aspire for a drop of this substance, this divine substance. What is it? Right? And he said, Sri Radha Padasevan Amritam. Oh, Tadba Dato Misho. Oh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. This is your gift to the world. The service, the nectarine service of the holy lotus feet of Sri Mati Radharani. Sri Radha Padasevan Amritam. Radha Dadha Dasyam. That is Bhaktivinoda Thakur's gift to the world. And that's why Srila Saraswati Thakur said, who has written this? And they said, oh, Sri Dharma. No, he has not written this. It is so perfect. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written this through him. And now I am satisfied. Soon I will leave the world, but I came here to give something, to distribute something. And now I see someone has received that. I see the evidence of its reception. Now I can go in peace, knowing that it's safely with him. And I'm fully, perfectly represented by him. And that man is none other than Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj. And this is his uh, holy appearance day. Hare Krishna. And are we doing the puja? Huh? Okay. All right. So now to sing. Can you sing Gurudev's song in praise of Guru Maharaj? Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Pari Raja Kachoda Asta Terrace of the Sri Sri Mahad. Shri Bhakti Rakak Sri Dar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Rakak Sri Dar Dev Goswami Maharaj Abir Ba Mahamahuta Bhakti Ti Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Bhagavan Shri Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai And are they going to close the curtains now? Okay. <laughs> All right, sing. <laughs>
Recording.